Having applied backup plans to our databases and monitored the creation of backups, at some point we might need to use those backups. So to do that, we can go backup and recover and choose the recover option. We can then find our source data. In this case, I've set a filter on PostgreSQL instance and you can see there it is. Right select and go next. You will initially be shown the timeline view. The timeline view is a graphical view that shows all of your backups in both your snapshot pool and your OnVault pool. There is a slider here if you have more images that then can be seen on the screen. You can see there is a carpet arrangement that shows the availability of a recovery range. In other words, we're not only backing up the database, we're also backing up the database logs. And the recovery range is shown for each image. You can also change to a table view, which lets you see your images in a table. You can see I've got images in my snapshot pool and images in my envelope pool. Choose the point in time that you want and then choose either mount or restore. The mount option is a way to quickly access your data without it being copied first. So we choose the host that we're going to mount to, choose the database within the instance we want to access. If there's more than one database, we can choose how many we want to access. In this case, I only have one. We can rename the database. In this case, I'm keeping the name the same. Because I'm mounting back to the original host, I need to run Postgres on a different port. In this case, I'm choosing port 5433. We need to supply the OS username that the database is running under, and we need to supply the home directory. When we're happy, we can hit submit. Before I do that, if we look on the source host, you can see I've currently got a source database and it's currently using slash PG data. We'll now select submit and begin the mount job. You can monitor from the system monitor by going monitor jobs. You can see my mount job has succeeded. So it's now time to check out our virtual copy of the database. If you remember when we ran the df command, we only saw the output of slash pg data. We now see some additional mount points. We also ran a command to display the contents of our database. However, we can now run an additional command to display the contents of the mounted database. And we can see that in this case, it's exactly the same. When we're finished with the mount, we can go app manager, active mounts, right select, and do an unmount and delete. This does not delete the backup, it deletes the mounted copy of the backup. When we're happy, we hit submit. While a mount is a great way to rapidly access a copy of our backup data, we may of course need to do a restore. So we get to it via exactly the same method, go backup and recover, recover, find the application you want to recover. In this case, I've used a filter, select next, choose the point in time you wish to recover to, and then instead of selecting mount, select restore. You don't get to choose which host because a restore always restores the source host. When you hit submit, you will be prompted to enter the word data loss to confirm that we will delete the source database and replace it with our backup. Because a restore involves data movement, it will take longer than a mount. And again, you can monitor the restore by going to monitor jobs.